Against the backdrop of a large-scale explosion of a supposedly reliably protected and huge ammunition depot in the Tver region, which had no analogues in the Russian Federation, the Z community has urgently asked the question, how much does the state of Russia's nuclear shield differ from the state of ordinary missile depots? The depots that Russian propaganda and authorities praised, in fact, turned out to be extremely vulnerable even to drone attacks. Russia had previously said the facility had the most advanced defense technologies in place, but drones caused a massive detonation of munitions overnight, causing significant damage. The Russian telegram channel Seattle Vetra writes about this. The episode, despite statements about the reliability and safety of such facilities, raises doubts about the security of the country's strategic arsenals. The question arises, to what extent can Russian nuclear facilities be protected in the event of similar attacks? The authors write. If a warehouse that was supposed to withstand a nuclear blast was blown up by a drone, then how do they store nuclear missiles? The report noted, but the patients of Z Russia, who love to wave a virtual nuclear club, of course, prefer not to raise these questions and meanwhile, two and a half years of this SVO, if they have shown anything to the enemies of Russia, is, it is, the complete weakness, rottenness and decay of the state. The report emphasizes, recall in 2018, in Toropets, Tver Oblast, the Russian Ministry of Defense began building ammunition depots using the latest technology. At the same time, the deputy head of the Russian Defense Ministry, Dmitry Bulgakov, assured that the arsenal would be completely protected from external influences, which meant that shells could be stored there without fear. As it turned out, the aforementioned Ukrainian Armed Forces warehouses had already been attacked twice, but the local authorities and the Russian Defense Ministry kept silent about these facts. The first attack was carried out on June the 29th. Two drones flew to the military unit and exploded there. Another strike was carried out on May the 5th, when a drone also exploded on the territory of the unit. More than 100 wildfires stretched thousands of firefighters to the limit in northern Portugal on Wednesday, with seven deaths since the worst spate of fires in recent years spread out of control over the weekend. Portuguese Prime Minister Luís Montenegro declared a state of calamity for the hardest-hit areas late on Tuesday, invoking powers to mobilize more firefighters and civil servants. He also called on police investigators to redouble their efforts to find those who started the fires and pledged help for those who have lost their homes or have been evacuated. We are well aware that these difficult hours are not over yet, Montenegro told the nation in a televised address. We have to continue to give everything we have and ask for help from our partners and friends so that we can reinforce the protection of our people and property. The European Copernicus Satellite Service said that over 15,000 hectares had been scorched and a combined 13 kilometers of fire fronts had been detected as on Tuesday night. It added that an area home to 210,000 people was exposed to the fire risk. The hot, dry conditions behind the outbreaks in Portugal coincided this week with flooding in Central Europe. The European Union said Wednesday that the juxtaposed extreme weather phenomena are proof of a climate breakdown. Fellow European Union members Spain, France, Italy and Greece have committed two water-dropping aircraft each to help Portuguese firefighters. Spain's military is also sending 240 soldiers and vehicles from its emergency response battalions specialized in combating fires to its neighbor. Thick gray smoke and the smell of burnt wood reached some 85 kilometers across the border into northwest Spain. Montenegro made a special call for security forces to pursue both arsonists and any individuals who started a fire out of negligence. Portuguese National Police said that they have arrested seven men suspected of having started wildfires in recent days. Authorities have prohibited the use of heavy farming equipment to reduce the risk of inadvertently starting a blaze. Among the hardest hit areas is the district of Aveiro, south of the northern city of Porto, but several major blazes were also raging out of control in other wooded areas. Authorities have yet to release figures for property damage or the number of evacuees, but Portuguese state broadcaster RTP has shown charred houses in rural villages and local residents trying to battle flames with buckets of water, hoses, 
and even large tree branches. Other televised images showed visibility reduced to a few meters as orange smoke enveloped the terrain.